started as a principal investigator in, since the year 2005. Uh, at that time, I was a neurology trainee in Hospital Pulau Pinang. And, uh, and uh, we have quite a lot of patients, uh, a neurology patients like Parkinson's disease, stroke, epilepsy, okay. you know, like all, all those neurology disease like Alzheimer's disease, etc. Yeah. At that time, I still remember uh, the first time the Quintal CRO came and approached me, you know, and then they asked me, uh, Doctor, are, are you interested to participate in the trial? Then I was thinking, uh, then they said it's a new drug, you know, then I was thinking, Hey, why not? You know, like uh, if the drug can benefit my patient. So, uh, but then I, I'm a bit worried because I have no experience at all, and I don't know what it is about. And I'm, I'm, I'm the first time they want me to be the principal investigator. But somehow, uh, I got the encouragement from Doctor Ong Lok Ming, the CRC Hospital Pulau Pinang uh, head. He he said, uh, it's okay. We will support you. No, so so I, I said okay then uh, I, I can maybe I can try but I say I, I cannot promise you many patients because at that time it's a Parkinson disease trial mm-hmm. they we we have around I think the hospital has around 160 to 200 Parkinson patients oh, in the clinic yeah because it's a that was Penang General Hospital it is not really reference center but the the island population ma. And uh, the beds of that hospital is 1,100 beds, okay. you see. So, uh, around 200 patients. Then they said, you only give us five subjects. Oh, they just need five. They just need five. You know, so I was thinking, no problem. Yeah. One. Five subjects is, you know, like five out of 200 is how much? It's 2.5%. So I thought, no problem, I, I can try. La. Then I said, okay, la. the worst, worst come to work, I give them three enough already, you know. But uh, then that's how I started. And then in, out, in the end, I gave them 10 subjects, oh, okay. you know, and then they're very happy, you know. And also, I, I must say that I must thank the CRO, the Quintal, uh, Mr. Goh Chai Singh. He, he's the one who, you know, like lead me along the way. And, uh, and then their team are so good. You know, like I, I was such a, such a novice, you know, like uh, investigator, totally know nothing yes. at all, except I got GCP, and then Dr. Ong, and then all the team, they, they show me, you know, then, uh, and then the other thing is that I, I think they don't actually require much, they just want you to do what you're doing in your daily uh, practice, you, you just do, the, it, it's the same thing, you know, except the documentation is a lot, lah. so that's how I started, then after that, that year also, another two other Parkinson's disease trial come in, you know, and uh, I very boldly take up the project, but I promised them five, five only. But in the end, all I, I completed, I, I fulfilled my promise. Huh? And so that's how I started. Number one is Dr. Ong Lok Ming. Lok. He is the, he is a nephrology, he's a consultant nephrology, but uh, I always admire him that he got so much knowledge, you know, in research. Every time we go and ask him, then he will be, he will, uh, you know, like he keep advice. This willing one, to share, his willing to share his experience and support us. Uh-huh. You know, like whatever, whenever we have problem, he will support. You see, and uh, non selfishly, very generously, and and then the knowledge especially. You know, and then and then ethical issue also some medical legal issue. He he's he's one of those boss who will uh, come in. You know, whenever you are in trouble. You know, but then during normal day, then she will say things that put you down but but during big issue he will come and he was definitely you know Encourage that you are safe you, yeah. you know you're safe with reassure this, you reassured and then he will cover you uh-huh. you know he's that boss very good the second person is professor amir mm-hmm. at that same time also professor amir was doing some trial and then uh, his own trial you know and he he uh, he asked me to be his sub eye in his diabetic trial and I also blur blur. I said, what am I supposed to do there, you know? Then uh, he, he, he invited me, uh, I mean like, he, he, uh, his uh, SE study coordinator, the chief study coordinator, Juan Hermini, she called me right. if I would like to uh, participate in the trial. I said, yes, I, 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 I want, you know, I want to learn. So I, I go and hell out and I saw, I saw that their, their CRC is very systematic. You know, they arrange things and the SC is very important, study coordinator is so important. Her mini, you know, like is like a, a commander, arrange everything nicely, which doctor come at what time, which patient come at what time. It's so accurate and it's so systematic, it's so good. Then I, I did it there and it, it doesn't take up much of my time, you know. 
and then after that uh, then they, they of course you know like you did you did errors protocol violation then they teach you and things like that uh, you know but along the way I, I learned and also he compensate you know people adequately that means even sub investigator he will compensate that means I, I took my time to go over to his Penang Medical College you know to, to examine his patient for three hours you know like according to visit yeah. he compensate me which make me feel good because yeah. It's not like he's taking advantage of me. Yeah. You know, some PI will will just ask you to do, then that's it. Yeah. You know, but he compensate the junior doctor. That was when I was a junior. So now, after I become a senior uh, consultant, I make sure that I would tell them that how much I will compensate them. Mm-hmm. You know, for the time that they allocate to see patient. Mm-hmm. So that's how I learn. Okay, I have uh, 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 done uh, uh, Parkinson disease trial, I think quite a lot, I think around for 6 to 8 of them, okay. Parkinson disease trial. I've done epilepsy trial, which is around maybe 2 to 3, and then I've done dementia trial as well. Uh, neuroscience is one of the area that a lot of new drugs are coming in, mm-hmm. because there's no drugs. Ma. The rest, like Parkinson, there's already available yeah. drugs. So. Yeah. You know, like you, you yeah. need, uh, there's available drugs, yeah. and then even epilepsy, there's available drugs. Whatever new drugs that come in is like, should be better than the old drugs. Mm-hmm. But for Alzheimer's disease, there's no cure. There, there, there are many factors. One of which is that there are new drugs, okay. you know, new drugs available for my patient. And uh, sometimes I, I feel that, uh, you know, like uh, my patient, like uh, Parkinson, is it, an uh, advanced stage, you know. I already use all the drugs that I have in the hospital for them and then then when they come they say doctor any other things I I said I'm so sorry until now there's no drugs here you know but when there's new drugs coming in you know then I I offer them would you like to try this you know uh, you know it's a hope for them you know this one the other thing is that uh, I with participating in trial I got more rapport with my patient you know, like at, at normal time, I maybe see them for 10 minutes or 5 minutes and then say, how are you doing? Fine, okay, continue say. But when the patient participates in the trial, you need to take history yeah. again and then it takes around like 2-3 hours per visit per patient. You know, so a lot of my patients actually, they become a, a trial patient already. They want to do another trial, you know, like they finish one trial, they ask, ada lagi ke? You know, and, uh, and then they like the nurses and the environment. And uh, and then uh, and then with that we actually uh, find out a lot of uh, background history of the patients. Sometimes, uh, last time we said that patient not on medication. Uh, how come still have the epilepsy attack and things like that? But sometimes you you know that they have some family problem, you know, so they are cannot compliant to the drug. So with that you already cured them and then they feel good that they feel belonging. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the other thing that I like about trial is uh, you work in team. You cannot work alone, mm-hmm. you know. And then uh, the other e- the other factor that I like about trial is that uh, because of doing trial, I, I got better connection with my other department colleague. You know, like radiology, like pharmacy. I have to go and see them and ask them. Uh, like like pharmacy, I have to ask them about the drugs issue and then ask if they are help for for keeping my drugs. And uh, even pathology also. Then we have better rapport. Now that the like the pathology department, they just had a fire recently, you know, oh. and then uh, they are, their freezer uh, broke down, so they, they cannot keep their reagent. So they asked us whether can keep in our our freezer. We said no problem, not freezer, the the fridge refrigerator. We said no problem. I mean, like we have some empty space yet. You so see. good networking. Huh? Good networking, you know. Then other is that uh, uh, we networking in uh, outside the hospital. I network with other hospital people and I network internationally with other uh, neurologists and and then uh, also neuroscientists, you know. Last time we hardly have chances to meet them, you know, like even meet is, is a drug conference. It's very different, you know, like people pay you to go for the yeah. conference because you go for that. But this time it's not, you go because of a project. Then we can voice up our how to say uh, our opinion in this project we can tell them our clinical experience then they will take it seriously and you are part of the project so I think it's a good experience okay. how important is it for a trial drug to be continued even after the study closes uh-huh. yeah. okay. maybe for certain uh, diseases like Alzheimer's disease where there is currently no treatment sure. and maybe that trial drug has been showing very good effect 
but usually after that study closes, the drug won't be given to patients anymore. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. So how important is it for that trial drug to be continued after? It is very important. Yeah. Okay, I give you an example. Uh, epilepsy trial. Okay, my patient has been on uh, three anti-epileptic drugs and then still not working, you know. Uh, then, uh, then I enroll him into this, uh, this epilepsy new drugs trial and the seizure control. So completed already. Am I, then I stop the drugs all, right? Then that means I'm rendering the patient back to fitting again, yeah. right? So usually uh, for our neurology drugs, usually the company are very good, you know? They, will, they have a, a, a clause that called compassionate program. Okay, then that means they will continue to supply the drugs until the drugs is marketed in Malaysia. Okay. So uh, you, in the beginning, they usually say no, no, you know, in agreement, they yeah. will not give. But if you ask, they usually will give because it shows that the drugs is effective. I think, I think in, on their part also, they are writing out and say that when the, when the study trial completed, we still got three patients who are not willing to be off the drug. I mean, like, it's a good yeah. publicity for them. Yeah. You see, I, I thought so. Like, I'm not, I don't know whether they will do that or not. I'm not sure. But, but there's a program. Clinical huh? trial agreement that, that drug will be continued? No, no. They usually, in the agreement, they will usually say they will not continue the drugs. Oh, okay. You got it or not? Okay. They, and then uh, they, they usually very defensive, say no. But my experiences is that when it finished, if the drug has not come to Malaysia yet, most of the time they will continue for us. Your drug is so good, can you continue for my patient? So they are very compassionate enough and then they continue. So my patient is continuing on that drug for the past three years and she doesn't have fitting anymore. And can you imagine they are staying in the village, they cycle, you know, they still cycle. So sometimes when she cycles, she can fell down and hit her head and 60, 70 years old lady. Okay. Yeah. The, sometimes I was thinking, it may never come to Malaysia at all because there are several of similar type of drugs. Okay. Because this is a third generation, like the drugs that I give my patient. The first generation, second generation is available in Malaysia. This is a third generation, which is a, the, the molecule, they just modify a bit, you know. From the first generation, they've already effective, but they modify a bit the molecule, make it even more effective. Now, they modify further the molecule, you know, to make it even more. Sometimes our government, we say, already got these two types. This, why would we want to import another type, you see? So, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, for us. Uh, so, for if me, that happens, will, that, will the drug company um, give that trial drug? Uh -huh. and, Until uh, indefinitely. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Okay. Huh? Maybe. I, I, but they, they, they never make promise. Uh -huh. I mean, like, but uh, so far, I'm, I'm very impressed with all these uh, uh, drug company, the foreign drug company, especially the Western. They keep to their promise uh, because neurology disease, neuron, the brain cell, uh, it doesn't regenerate like hair. You know, like hair. When our hair we cut, cut it short, yeah. it will grow again. Even liver also, you know. But brain cell, once it dies, it dies. And then you know, like like uh, young people will have uh, one thousand brain cell. Let's say more than that, of course, one thousand brain cell. But as you age, you become eight hundred. It becomes 600, it becomes 500, 300, and then get less and less. It's neurodegenerative. So far, nobody has ever, you know, like make it regrow or whatever. So, and then a lot of uh, Parkinson's disease are actually, uh, a, a lot of neurology disease are neurodegenerative disease. That means like Parkinson, you know that they will get worse. There's no way you know, to like, reverse, reverse it. it. Yeah. There's no such thing, you know. Um, even like a uh, stroke, one you have the injury, then that's it. Yeah. You know, there's no way to reverse it. So I hope one day there will be a drug, you know, like, like uh, intervention, like cardiac disease that can prolong life and then not only prolong life, but improve quality of life. Yeah. You know, like, like then uh, the, the, the most feared is dementia or forgetfulness. They forget, the, the patient forget, they are, they are not only watchers, forget the road to go home, they forget their children. They totally can't tell the name and then when they see their children, they will shout and they will feel so scared. You know, that, you know like that, the kind of, um, that kind of dilemma and you know, the, the, the situation. So I hope one day there will be a, a cure for, 
for dementia especially you know at least a better quality of life you know like sometimes after we go we want to go back home and be with our mother and father we want them to enjoy our children grandchildren and things like that so i hope to see that there will be a breakthrough it made me look at patient differently you know and uh, and my advice to patient also different that last time before i involved in clinical trial you know like uh, patient like to ask us prognosis they ask doctor uh, like I am having, I am having dementia. What is what will happen to me five years later? Is there any new drugs? Ah? then I I will say like, yeah, hmm. this dementia ah, is something neurodegenerative. You will get worse as time goes by, you know, and uh, drugs ah, no drugs lah like that only lah, you know. But now after I do trial, the way I counsel them will be different. I say, yes, it's a neurodegenerative disease. But there are a lot of trial people are doing, you know. I you will never know. Maybe tomorrow, next week, some new drugs will come and there will be cure, and it make a difference to the patient. You know, you can see their face light up. The other the other group of patient is demyelinating disease patient, which is multiple sclerosis. This type of patient, whenever you ask them to to participate in trial, they they never say no and they will want. They come forward and ask you. Because if if they don't do it, they don't take the the drugs. There's no hope. Yeah. But after they take the drug, you can see that practically they stand up and then they walk. And these are young people, twenty, thirties, forties, and then some of them are lecturer, some of them are banker, you know. So it gives them hope, you know. So research give patients hope, and also research make physician uh, optimistic that there's hope for my patient. Yeah. Okay. Message which I you know like if you know like uh, other uh, young investigator would like to know is that don't worry you know it, you you always can deliver mm-hmm. you know as long as you got the patient pool mm-hmm. because we see patient every day yeah. we know how many we have. Yeah. Yeah.